John 19, verse 25, it reads, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, somebody shout his mother, his mother. and his mother's sister, his auntie, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, referring to John, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to his disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, his disciple took her unto his home. I want to use as a title of today's message, Jesus is the real matchmaker. Jesus is the real matchmaker. Now, the mothers, the parents, the people that we have connected to us were not matched by ourselves. But let's tell you, they were matched by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords himself. When you allow Jesus to be your matchmaker, we will cut down on a whole lot of errors and a whole lot of break it, broken hearts and a whole lot of pain a whole lot of agony when we stop trying to match make our own relationships and allow Jesus to be our matchmaker. Many of us can testify that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, gave us the exact mother that we need. And there could have been a lot of women, more women at the cross, but there were only three women and one man at the cross. Instead of being the 12 disciples, there were only one that still stood there when everybody else forsook him. Even in the church today, the average is three women to one man. It's the same recognition, the same statistic that was there at the cross. Nothing changed because the people that really love Jesus, Cedric, they're going to be right where his foot is. The people that really love Jesus, you don't have to worry about where they are. You don't have to look for them. When people always say, where is this person? Where is this person? Where are the men? Where this and that? You don't have to look for the real men that love God. You don't have to look for folks that's really on fire for Jesus. I don't got time to be looking for somebody that ain't looking for Jesus. But when you're really looking for Jesus, you're going to see exactly who Jesus has matched us with. Good God Almighty. Everybody, Harvey, that's in the tabernacle today are exactly the people that Jesus matched us with who are supposed to be in the house of the Lord, giving God the glory, the honor, and all the praise. Preach, Holy Ghost. And there they are, making love at the cross. When everybody else is fleeing the cross, when everybody else is afraid of the cross, Felicia, the people that really loved him, they were together making love at the cross, showing God the love at the cross. That's when you really know the people that really have real their love is. Can they handle your cross? Can they still be there for you? Can they still be on your side during the cross years? During the cross moments? During the crossroads? Oh my God. Nobody arguing, nobody fussing, nobody fighting. Jesus said, woman, behold thy son, and son, behold thy mother. And all they did was touch and agree. Nobody trying to say, what you talking about? Nobody trying to say, I don't understand what you're saying. Nobody trying to interrupt him. Nobody trying to give him feedback that is contradictory to what his wishes are. In an emergency, you got the two things you got to do in an emergency. You got to listen and you got to follow instructions. <laughs> That's the biggest things you need to do in an emergency. And in that situation, Jesus getting ready to go back to heaven. And he don't have much time, I leave, before he checks out of here. So he said, I got some real quick instructions. I need you to take care of my mother. And mother, I don't want no bad talk. This is about to be your son. And all they said was okay. Good God Almighty. You need some people to be able to say okay in your desperate situations. And Mary does not faint at the cross. Mary does not give up and lose her mind as she sees her son being crucified. 
And that's what's so powerful about many of you women of God. You don't lose your mind. You don't faint when things get tough in your family. You don't faint when things get tough in this world. You don't faint when things get tough or what they talking about on the news. The Bible said in Proverbs 24 and 10, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Uh-huh. And Jesus told John, this is your mother. Okay. He didn't ask, where's the insurance money? He didn't ask, where's the furniture you're going to move into the house? <laughs> he didn't ask, uh, who going to feed him? He going to ask, ain't no, are you going to leave me some EBT card? You going to leave me some miracles? You going to leave me some, some cash money to, to help take? All he said was okay. You need some people in your life that you don't have to explain everything to. You need some people in your life that you don't have to go into every detail. You need some people who can interpret the rest of the story. <laughs> you, sometimes I have people all around me and I can't necessarily go into details because I may not want everybody to hear the conversation and I'm smacking my head saying, can you read what I'm talking about? What we've always done already? Do I have to break out rule book number 7893-4 and explain what we need to do again? Oh God. Can I just give you a look like Jesus did and everything be all right? Jesus didn't have to explain his problem. All his disciples said was, say no more. <laughs> you need some people, Jalisa, in your life to say, say no more. I got to go to work. I don't got nobody to watch the baby. Say no more. My money is short. I don't get paid until the end of the week. Say no more. <laughs> God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I need some gas. I don't have no money. Say no more. Uh, I I need, I'm, I'm a little hungry. My, say no more. My phone is say no more. Now, what happened? Didn't I give you something last week? What, what happened to this? What happened to that? Explain. Say no more. You need some say no more saints in your life. You need some saints, Tristan, that you don't have to explain what you're going through. You don't have to explain when you don't see their spouse. Where your spouse at? Where they at? Where they been? What? Say no more. Here go your hug. Say no more. Just let me give you a hug. Say you don't have to explain nothing. You don't have to give me no explanation of what's going on. Say no. Say nothing at all. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Just let me be here for you. I said, Sam, here goes some paperwork. I need you to sign. She don't have to say a word. Bam, it's signed. Put your social around this information. She don't have to explain. No explanation, no nothing is signed. Those are what you call Christ connections. Those four people at their cross, they were what we call Christ connections. Those are the people who were cross connections. People who connect at the cross are the best connections in the world. People that's right there with you at the cross. Cross connection. You can ask cross connection people anything. Because y'all connected under the cross of Christ. Y'all connected under the fire, under the blood of the Lamb. These are what we call cross connections. Relationships made at the cross. That's why the church is so powerful. Because we are cross connections. We wouldn't know each other if it were not for the cross. These are cross connections. We ought to be able to take a licking with each other and keep on ticking because we are connected through the cross. If Jesus was working at the cross for Mary and John, being a master matchmaker, you best believe he's still working for us right now. If we seen Jesus is on the main line, tell him what you want. If he worked for Mary and he worked for John. I'm here to tell you that he's making matches for us right now. Look at the relationship he's already put together for us. Who in the church cooks greens and yams like Sister Shirley? Look at it. He matched up with us. He matched up with us, y'all. Who guards the door like the Matthew family? 
He mashed us with it. Who, who comes to sing praise on my mind with the president on the side? Look at some of these saints that he's mashed with us already. Father and son blesses the church. What father and son blesses the church like Bruce and Chris Daly? He the match with us some awesome people that love him. Nobody interferes with my master match relationships because I know God put us together. Minister Williams said she almost knocked the man on the head for telling her, don't bless the pastor with a love offering. She said, man, are you crazy? She said, that's my master match relationship. God matched us together. You can't go against my master match relationships. MIT was crying the other day. She made some, some chicken and she made some some potatoes. The potatoes were good. I said, let your children eat your chicken. <laughs> she looked like she about to cry. I said, don't, you ain't Keisha now. Don't, don't get mad because I eat everything Keisha put to the table. <laughs> Keisha, that's a master match relationship. He ordained me to have some food to eat. <laughs> he anointed Keisha to be able to cook that food the way I like it. Don't walk around it and have a nervous breakdown because I eat Keisha food all up and I say, I don't want that chicken. I, can't, I, can't, I don't like that chicken. So I'm rolling with that chicken. That chicken spice ain't, ain't just right. You can't get upset when you already have relationships that God has matched together. Don't try to fight the relationships that God has already matched together. Don't try to interfere with the relationship that God has already matched together. He tells about he matched us together. He matched us together. He, he matched us together. I got this secretary, Dave, Sister Adams. You, you got this scepter. Everybody may not love it. They don't love me. But you, if you're going to be around me, you, that's, the, that's a master match relationship. That's a master match relationship. I don't care how, how what you just say or don't say. But that's a master match. That relationship was matched at the cross. I got some preachers that I love. Minister Will and Minister Wade. They some master match relationships. You got to handle my master match relationship. I got a wild, crazy woman that'll run over you. Done, brother. That, that does some stuff for me. But that's a master match relationship. That's my friend. That's my partner. That's my ace boom boom shit. Kind of weird. But that's a master match. God master at the church. Good God Almighty. And, and, and when, you, when you have a master match relationships, I tell you, you love the people that God put in your life. You really, really love people that God put in your life. When you understand that this is a cross connection. This is a divine connection, look on you. This is what God has established at the cross. We wouldn't know each other had not Jesus died for our sins at the cross. This is a master match relationship. He's the matchmaker. He made these relationships that we have. Mother, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. So you learn to love. I love all the way. Some of these things, they love all the way. When I, when I, send, a, when I send a text sometimes, I send back some red hearts. I see some of the things they send back. Blue hearts, I don't know what that mean. They send green heart. I don't know what that mean. They send raspberry. I don't even know what that mean. <laughs> I see Eric Shady, they see them double red hearts. Jaleesa, them double red hearts. The saints in the double red hearts. They see them, them hearts so red, they never seen them that red. But when you matched with God, I don't know how to love you in blue. At least it like that. I don't know how to love you in green. I laugh and say, are they afraid to love? I'm afraid. What does red? Red don't mean come get in my bed. Red just means I love you for real. Red just means this is a master match relationship. This means that I'm here for you. 
That's all it that's all it means. They sit back green. I, my, my, I already have green on my phone. I can't reply. Sometimes I try to reply back the way people reply back. Cause maybe they, they know something I don't know. So, but I say I'm sticking to red. I ain't changing no color. I'm sticking to the only one way I know the love is with the blood of Christ. My heart bleeds red because it's full of the blood of the Lamb. Because that's a match to match relationship. Preach Holy Ghost. Because Jesus is the master match maker. He knows how to put families together. Uh, we mess up, but Jesus knows how to do it. Going outside of Jesus is a disaster. There are only two families, two types of families mentioned in the Bible. There are only two types of families mentioned in the Bible. The first family is your natural family. Jesus said he would tear that apart if he went in it. It's deep, ain't it? Your natural family, Jesus said, I'm going to tear that thing apart if I'm not in it. He said, I'm going to tell your natural family. Them folks that you, you was born in, in relation to, you don't you have no choice in it. You don't know who they was. You don't know who, who what it's going to be about. He said, if they don't accept Jesus, that's why you're supposed to raise your family in God so Jesus don't tear it apart. But he said, if they not, if they don't have me in it, I'm going to tear it apart. Your second family is your supernatural family that he doesn't have to tear apart because he's already in it. Oh my God, this is some teaching and preaching on Mother's Day. God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel like doing my prince move, brother. Look what it said, Matthew 10 to 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. But if all of us love him the same, then he don't got to tear apart the family. Because we love him the same, good God Almighty. But here's your supernatural family. John 19, 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. I don't got to tear that apart. I put it together. He said unto his disciple, behold thy mother. But from that hour, the disciple took her as his own. Yeah. Jesus is the master matchmaker. He wants to match every relationship in your life. Tell somebody, he wants to match every relationship in your life. Here's the difference between rich people and poor people. And middle class people. Poor people and most middle class people, most poor people and most middle class people are only concerned with boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship types, romanticism. There's relationships with the opposite sex. They just, there's, there's, if they get that, they feel like, oh my God, they don't need nothing else. That's why when they mess up, they be devastated. <laughs> Somebody say, ha, ha, ha. Somebody happy about these folks breaking up. <laughs> they say, ah, ha, 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 ha. that's what you get, you not your own food. <laughs> they, they put everything, they give everything that becomes their God. That one, that's all they ever drink. That Ken and Barbie doll, that's all they ever dreamed about. And nobody else matter. They mama don't matter no more, they dad don't matter no more, their brothers, so nobody else matter. Pastor don't matter. Nobody matters. But rich people concerned about every relationship. The accountant counts. The doctor relationship counts. The relationship with their lawyers count. The relationship with their pastor count. The relationship with their dentist count. The relationship with their Sunday school teacher counts. The re every relationship. The relationship with their mechanic count. The relationship with the school teacher at the school count. Every relationship counts with wealthy people because they don't want nothing messed up in their life. With wealthy people, they want everything at peace. They want everything at home because they know if the relationship on the job ain't right, it's going to mess up home eventually. They don't know if the relationship in the house of the Lord ain't right, then they're going to become a worse Christian eventually. 
So you got to make sure every relationship is right. And God is concerned about your every relationship. That's why he said, be good unto all men. Show peace unto all people. Pray for your brother and do good to your neighbor. He's concerned about how we even treat our neighbor. Because God is concerned about every relationship. Successful, wealthy people want every relationship to go well. They don't want to have a bad name with nobody. They want to be at peace with everybody. So God wants you to be in his match-made relationship. If God didn't put it together, I don't want it. That's why he said in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness and unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? What is it? Proverbs 27 and 9. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So do the sweetness of a man's friends by a hearty counsel. Some people that give me counsel, I know it comes from God. They always steer me right. Every word is sweet counsel, like it's coming from the word of God. Proverbs 27, thy own friend and thy father's friend, forsake not, neither go to thy brother's house in the day of calamity. For better is a neighbor than a brother that is afar off. He's teaching us how to have proper relationships. This is what mama taught us to do good to everybody. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Why come they didn't teach us to some people that's not in our family? Don't say yes, sir. Say what's up. They taught them to say yes, ma'am. No, ma'am to everybody. Because they would get respect from everybody. And everybody would know you got proper home training. And you would have good connections with everybody. But you say, huh? He said, no, that's not right. Don't say ma'am to me and honor them. They taught us the right way. Why? So that when we leave the home, we will have good relationships with strangers even. And be careful how you entertain strangers because some may be angels unaware. Preach Holy Ghost. Who does Jesus love to match with us? Look at the top five types of people Jesus matches us with, and I'm done. Oh, God. Because you like it. I'm giving you five people, types of people that Jesus likes to match us with, and I'm done. Let's go eat some of this Mother's Day dessert. Number one, he matches us with his servants. Oh, he matches us with his servants. John 19, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, who were his mother and disciples? They were still servants. They were people who served the Lord, even to the death of the cross. I can't connect with folks that ain't serving God. I'm not interested in being partners with just anybody. Because I'm on the servant job of the Lord. And you will distract me if you're not handling God's business with me. So if he's going to put people in your life, you automatically know who come from the devil because they ain't going to want to serve God. You don't got to wait till they slap you. You don't got to wait till they don't pay you back. You don't got to wait till they crash your car and they don't have insurance. Just find out who you're serving. Just find out who you're serving. And that'll tell you everything that's going to happen in the future. That'll tell you what roads you're going to head down in the future. Just let me know who you're serving. Because he going to match us with his servants. That's a red heart right there. Harvey, that's a red heart, my man. I got nothing but red heart love for Harvey. Hallelujah. He going to match you with his servants. Secondly, he going to match you with his seekers. He going to match you with his seekers. Psalm 40 and 16. Let all that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. People that seeking God together, we glad together. 
We rejoice together. We worship together. We happy together. I don't like sad, pitiful looking people around me. Who you seeking? <laughs> I don't like people that look sick and mad and upset around me. Because we seeking two different people. Because if you're seeking the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you're going to have some joy about yourself. If you're really seeking God, you're going to have a praise about yourself. If you're really seeking God, life is going to be happy and good and prosperous and joyful. And prosperous don't always mean money. Because some of us know how to be happy and all we got is a bologna sandwich. Some of us, we've been happy without a stimulus check. We've been happy without an income tax check. We've been happy before 2020, during 2020, and after 2020. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. It doesn't matter. I learned how to be happy. Oh God. You got to know how to be happy. And nothing makes me happier than seeking God. So number one, he matches us with his servants. Two, he matches us with his seekers. Three, he matches up with his sheep. His sheep. He wants to match you, Ayanna, with his sheep. John 10 and 27, my sheep hear my voice. What would Jesus look like matching up his mother with a gangster? Huh, Mary, go to this dude. Hey, buck jumping all in the house. Playing rap music, bees and hoes, yeah, open up your clothes. Over. Mary like, what? Mary like, what is this? What is, Mary like, what is this? Jesus going to match you with his sheep. Other people that follow him like you do. That's what the master matchmaker does. Now, I don't know if it sounds like us, but it sounds like him. This is why really quiet is kept. Just from the first three identities who he matches us with, it's almost crazy when you're in a match relationship and there's drama. Because that tells you somebody can turn to the devil. Somebody can turn away. Because you can't be sheep and have drama. You can't be a seeker and be full of hell. You can't be a servant and be foolish and crazy. Somebody didn't turn around. Because God don't put us in through all this effort matching us for us to have hell in our lives. That does not happen. The only way it happened is somebody didn't turn away. 